Hi, everyone. So uh, we are going to talk about optimizing LLM efficiency one trace at a time on Kubernetes. And uh, if you spot uh, on salt flats, this is what we have captured, KubeCon NA. And uh, this was really cool. Um, it was amazing view out there. And uh, let me introduce myself. I am Seema Saran. I am working in Autodesk as an SRE. And I am CNCF ambassador. I have done CK, CKAD, and a lot of community work for CNCF and AWS and HashiCorp user group based on Jaipur. OK, uh, so hi, everyone. This is Aditya. <laughs> I'm currently working as a DevOps engineer at Forrester. Apart from that, yeah, I do uh, a lot of open source stuff. So yeah, I'm also one of CMS amb ambassador. I do mentor people. And then uh, I'm community builder. <clears throat> if you see, like, I've done a lot of certifications. And yeah, please reach out to me on slash ITSUNITTYL. But yeah, I will shortly reply you on the time. OK, <clears throat> so for today's topic, Let's jump right into the roadmap. So this is something we have created or crafted something for you. So how this wanna go is how this gonna go basically is so we're gonna start with many challenges that you can face while you're deploying LLM or writing the code. And then we can look for the solutions also. The first thing is like uh, we're gonna talk about the challenges with LLMs. Maybe then we can move to the understanding what the hotel is. It's not required although, but still just a quick go through. Then we can have something about profiling, how you can basically op basically use that in your current running infra, current running environment. And then uh, with help of that, what's actually coming in hotel for the same. And then going forward, uh, what's the current status, how we actually create and basically come up with a demo. Then, yeah, obviously, I talked about demo. So we're going to just jump directly into the demo. and. Uh, then we can have like how you can maybe uh, whatever challenges you face with LLMs, you can go with them. And at last, we can have some quick chat over here. Let's start. Uh, so obviously, everything uh, on the today's world is running on AI. It's if you see, maybe uh, it's kind of any model, anything. But everyone is using AI. It's sound interesting, right? But if you see, it's uh, grass is always one side the greener. But it's always fun until you're doing it. But when it comes to deploying those large code, those large images, model, and everything, it comes so extraordinary things like you have to manage a lot of stuff. It can be GPUs, CPUs, and then how the code are performing at the, maybe you have a lot of requests coming in or a large user base pool. OK, so for that, maybe you can face a lot of challenges. The first one, I'm talking about the basically the managing the LLM itself. You have crafted the code, but when it comes to do the upgradation, doing the dependency upgrade, on the time you can face a lot of maybe a major challenges, I would say. Maybe memory leak. So it's not always about like how your ops team is deploying them. It's always going back to the how you written the particular code of the same. So by profiling, maybe you can just look out to that memory leak issues or if you talk about latency or maybe OM killed, your particular ports are getting killed by out of memories, and uh, obviously the cost, because the major stuff or the major problem that every organization who is adopting AI or going with LLM is facing is like the cost, because that is might be always increased around 40% or something, and then they are like, uh, we are shifting, but again, it's a major challenge for us, how we can reduce it. Scaling LLMs. Uh, you have done for some of the users, but when you're going so vast, you might be feel confused. We should allocate more CPU GPUs or how we should track like how much memory GPUs or CPUs we will need. And uh, again, how res high resource consumption. Because of that, what you do is you just increase even though it's not needed. Excessive GPUs and excessive CPUs, that's what basically you do. So these all are the challenges I would say that's uh, I'm damn sure like if you are uh, deploying LMs or using it, so you might be facing. So I'm not, uh, I'm not giving a guarantee like it will be solved, but like uh, if you follow some best practices by the end of the talk, you will find a lot of solutions. Okay, let's just move first thing like the understanding hotel. So in just a general world, uh, big general world, I would say like hotel is something, maybe a framework that is uh, 
created for, uh, I would say, like just taking all of the instrumenting data for your uh, melt. So when I say melt, so it's like maybe your matrices, it can be event, it can be your logs, and it can be traces. So that's how actually the you can use the whole Ortel framework to uh, logs and then maybe the visualizing your effects. So how Ortel is going? So currently it supported more than 40 observability vendors. So when I say supported, so it's like uh, they have already gone some integration, plugins, and a lot of stuff. Integrated with many libraries, services, and apps. So it doesn't matter how you're writing the code, but if you want to use the APIs of uh, Open Hotel, or maybe they just want to use the collector, you can do that easily. And adopted by numerous end users. So here I'm talking about a lot of organizations who use a lot of use cases, who build on that. And those are coming with a lot of good solutions. And those are even running on scales. OK. Uh, let's jump right into the understanding Autel Collector. So if you see right here, uh, we do have our microservices part. So by this, I mean to say, like, so uh, you do have your microservices, so whatever code you are writing. For the code, if you want to integrate Autel, it can go like maybe the uh, instrumentation or API or the SDK. So that's how maybe you can just add in in your code itself while you're writing, instead of just getting regret while it's deployed. After that, maybe you can move to the shared infra. So not sure if you're deploying it on Kubernetes, it can go to any cloud platform, or you want to start with the load balancer and then basically check all the traffic, how it's moving. So you can do that. And uh, obviously, you can send all of the data to the third-party services, like maybe Jaeger, Prometheus, and more. OK, so we do have Autel Collector here. Again, we are going with some client instrumentation. If you want to go with doing some stuff on your uh, whatever data you're getting, you can do that. And uh, yeah, we do have a front-end API. So by that, you can uh, basically getting all the traces, all of the logs and events. And then accordingly, what function you are writing, uh, that will be shown to you. So uh, like. If we just combine everything, so Autel Collector, basically, it's just vendor agnostic way to receive, just process, and export all of the data for you. OK, so that's what it is. Uh, let's just jump to the profiling. So if I have to explain this to a five-year kid, uh, like that's how I will do. And that's what this image is explaining. I just generated this with a AI tool. So uh, let's say, as a five-year kid, if I'm having a car, and that's my favorite one, and uh, it's not performing well, OK? And when, while it's not performing well, I've, I might look for issues like I should buy a newer one, uh, upgraded one. But the thing what I am more curious about, like why I can't solve this problem itself, like why this particular car is not working. So on that time, if I dig more into the problem, then I might go into the battery draining issue. Is there any particular uh, the tire or the wheel is getting stuck? Or maybe it's the battery issues that is not able to charge or something. So the same way, if it's if you go with the computers, if you go with the softwares, if you are thinking like, uh, so basically profiling is just a way to pinpoint exactly which parts of your code are draining more resources or more causing latency and more basically having your performance. Okay, so by each and every traces of your code, how your APIs are calling. You can basically check how much CPU or uh, GPUs are used. So that's how uh, like exciting it is and easy it is to figure it out. So I'm damn sure you must be uh, want to explore it more. So yeah, if I talk about the profiling announcement, so yeah, Autel just announced this uh, support for the profiling in 2022 at KubeCon Europe. So after that. A lot of works is going on behind the scenes. Uh, if you go to uh, GitHub dot, uh, github.com hotel itself, so you can find a lot of things are going there. And uh, if you see like how it came from, the profiling in Autel, so yeah, that's what it is. Like Basically, Elastic donated one of their uh, profiling agent to open telemetry to use it, to enhance it, to uh, basically go more for it. And uh, if you want to check it out more, how the things are uh, going there, so the best way is to go to this particular repo. So the one is highlighted. So it's open telemetry eBPF profiler. So that's where you can go. And that's where it's actually uh, the all of the process are merged and work is still in progress. 
going forward, as the talk title said, like how basically you can just, uh, with the help of tresses, how you can check your code. So if you see here, we do have a multiple request, the get, post, and uh, the last one is like the, we are just checking the liveness for the get request itself again. So we have just captured this one from one of our, uh, like one of the model, GPT, GPT-2, that we have deployed in our cluster itself. And that's where from we have got these stresses. And if you want to just go by each and every stresses, how things are going there and how the calls are making and then APIs are behaving, you can just maybe click any of them and check it out, the transaction details of each and every address. So the address ID would be like easier for you to just going forward and maybe check uh, like how the resource consumption is happening or maybe uh, how your code is behaving. So on that time, it, it, it actually feels like uh, you have something to have you on back. Okay, so that's how. So if you see here, we do have a route, uh, route that is slash generate. And for this, we do have a transaction, uh, basically the trace ID is here. And uh, that's how actually we have captured some of them. Maybe uh, it would be easier for you to jump right into demo and have more details on it. So yeah, let's move, go inside the demo and see how the things can move. So yeah, over to you, Seema, for the demo. All right. So um, in this demo, basically, we are using um, a text generation model, uh, and we are using Hugging Face GPT-2 model. That's open source, so um, we can use it. And I have built a fast API. I've used fast API. And basically, there are three APIs that uh, we have built. And these are all the libraries that we have to use to all the uh, to get all the metrics, traces, events from the code to open telemetry. So this is one of the library uh, trace, and then uh, we are using, since we are using fast API, so we have to import that as well. And uh, we are using open telemetry SDK and some logging systems so that we can see all the logs of the application as well. And we are using transformer library, and uh, since we have used GPT-2, so we have imported the uh, libraries and uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, the line number 13 is a custom Python file in which I have configured all the open telemetry metrics for traces, and this will get all the traces, logging, and metrics to our code, uh, to our open telemetry system. And uh, yeah, it is basically um, getting all the meter provider, logger provider, and trace provider. I have uh, included all the necessary libraries, which exports all the metrics, traces, and logs. And uh, these are the, uh, this is my requirements.txt file, so we are installing all the necessary libraries in this. <clears throat> right, and um, uh, we have defined uh, logging so that um, in code it will be easier to understand our application and uh, we have initialized tracing metrics, and uh, I have defined some custom metrics so that we can understand our LLM better, like tokens for memory usage, and these are the logging for just so that we know that our model is loaded and it has uh, it is tokenized, and uh, which model we are using? It's GPT-2, and now we have some APIs so. If we go to slash, it will generate some uh, welcome message. And the main API is our post API for generate. And uh, this is basically a text generation request. So whatever input we are providing, it will generate the text. It's a basic model. And uh, we have also um, defined logging here as well. Um, once the text is generated, it will 
give the response and it will also show how many tokens are remaining because that's really important for our LLM models. And uh, everything is generated in JSON. And uh, we have some liveness and readiness checks for our application. This, these are just uh, basic get APIs. And uh, lastly, we have CPU usage, memory usage, and at the end, we are starting our fast API server on port 8000. Next is, this is the dashboard that we will see after starting our application. And uh, you can see the resources LLM, and we can see all types of uh, log levels, debug information, errors, even though it doesn't have any error right now, but it will show each log level. And once we click on any of the log system, it will show the trace ID, the content breakdown, and uh, you can see the tokenize, tokenized input and everything. And if you notice here, it also shows remaining tokens. So in the code, uh, we have defined max tokens. Um, so these are the tokens that we can use at max. And after each um, API call, it generates that how many remaining tokens are there. Right. So these are all the metrics like generated text and tokenized input and each of the logging system that we have added in our code. And uh, you, will, you can customize the fields as well. You can check the service name, runtime name. And uh, if you go to traces, since we have configured three APIs, post, get, and get, for generate readiness and liveness, we can explore more for each um, API, basically. So if you go to generate, you can see all the latency, throughput, how much traffic is there on the API, and uh, we can see failed transaction rate, traces samples, and at the end, we will, we will be able to see how much this trace is taking time, and furthermore, we can check the labels, the timestamp, and it also shows which agent we are using, so we are using Open Telemetry Python Elastic, and uh, we can check the event information, data stream, host, everything uh, in detail for a particular trace, and we can find out how much a particular uh, trace is taking time, and we can further debug to how to optimize that particular call. And uh, yeah, so we can also see the span ID, the timestamp and trace ID is unique, so you can also redirect it to the logs as well for that particular trace ID. Yeah, and it's, it also shows how much time it took for this particular API call. It's 168 microseconds. And same with the uh, other one for span details, we are using, again, uh, it's the same agent. And we can also check the logs. So if you notice here, remaining tokens, text generation took this 0.17 seconds. And uh, yeah. And the main part is the profiling that we are talking about uh, here. So um, to visualize the profiling, we can see all the threads that are currently running. And we can also explore, since this is, we are using Python 3, so we can check all the traces um, in a stack traces format. And uh, we can explore which library we are using. So we have used Torch, and uh, that is one of the most um, highly used CPU as well. So in this, you can see top 100 um, traces here. All the libraries are mentioned. And if you see flame graphs, you can explore each and every uh, traces, basically. And uh, if you go to this Python and uh, explore um, GPT-2, and uh, you can see uh, how much CPU it is consuming and uh, how much does it cost? 
And it also shows how much uh, carbon omission is there because uh, we have to re uh, be careful about the uh, um, sustainability as well since LLM models are pretty huge and that consumes a lot of compute powers. And uh, so this shows carbon emission. It is using 18.74 pounds and uh, annual cost is around $120. And uh, samples is 11,000. So you can see uh, total CPU is 4.22% for this particular uh, trace and samples are this. So these traces are basically running on Locust. So we have generated some uh, load test um, using Locust. So um, since LLMs are pretty huge, it will cost us, it can cost us around in 50Ks or more than that. And uh, since profiling is intru introduced, you can dig more deeper into that and reduce the costs as well. And uh, uh, after profiling is introduced, we have seen that uh, it has reduced a lot of cost as well for the applications. So we can uh, check from, from writing code to deploying the LLM, uh, LLM to production. We can see all the traces, all the memory leaks, uh, and optimize our code as well, not just the infrastructure. And we can reduce the costs, and we can optimize our LLM. And uh, also, since it was on Kubernetes, we can also define all the infrastructure metrics, like we can add CPUs, GPUs, and we can set limits and requests as well. We can use scheduled GPU pods, and we can use spot instances, like that. Okay, so going forward, maybe like, uh, as you already explained, uh, like the quick demo and then uh, other stuff, but how about like from developing to deploying? What are the things you can majorly concern? So maybe this is a slide that we help you for that. So like if you see in the development part, you can basically track CPU uses per token, how the particular token is using CPU and the API calls, and accordingly memory and latency for the same. And uh, for the deployment, you should be more concerned about the GPU utilization and uh, the resources that are consuming more resources that is not required for them. And uh, yeah, that's all about it. You can maybe uh, catch up us on LinkedIn or anywhere. So that's all. Okay, I saw there was at least one question here, so we'll start here yeah, at the please. front. <laughs> Did you kind of address this at the end? Uh, but obviously, uh, observability is important for any application. Mm -hmm. Why is it even more important, if so, for LLMs? And if someone is just starting out with LLMs, why do they care about this? What information can they take away that would really help them as a kind of an LLM newbie? OK, cool. So I guess that's a good question. Uh, Asima, you want to take it, or I should? Sure. You can take it. OK. So like. Uh, the way you're asking, like maybe the LLMs, how, uh, like if someone is moving towards them, and then how it's basically more concerned for them, right? While going to LLMs, is it the same? Or? Is it even more important? Observability is always important for any application. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, for LLMs, it's more important. Yeah, and why it is? More important for LLMs? Yes. So the reason being why, so see, uh, currently, previously, when you were using the normal applications, we just used to deploy it. When you observe it, you just take the all the logs, metrics, and all. It's all good. Whenever something is failing, you just get the triggers, and that's all good. But when it comes to LLMs, what basically happening is you uh, it consumes more of the GPU, CPU, and resources. When it uh, basically goes from dev stage and prod, what happens is like in dev, you have some limited resources defined. But when you have a lot of requests are coming in, unnecessarily a lot of ops guys, what they do is basically to resolve the issues, they just expand the CPU and GPU. And a lot of cost you will be just, uh, it's going vain basically, it's not using, okay? So let's say there's an application that's only using two, uh, two uh, I would say two CPUs, and you've defined four for it. Then the two CPUs are going in, like it's not useful for you, right? So it's better to have the visibility from profiling and from the code level itself, the, what is the particular code is using instead of just define it. 